remember learning to ride a bike as a child and the freedom it gave you, the freedom to go places and to explore places without your parents. As a kid, I spent my summers riding my bike to the local public swimming pool and to my friends' houses and to visit the boyfriend my parents didn't know I had. My bike was the most valuable thing I owned. I also rode it to school, at least until I got my driver's license at age 16. I love seeing more and more kids on bikes in Brussels. This is something you didn't see at all when I first moved to Brussels in the early 1990s. It was so dangerous, it was unthinkable. Today, I see kids riding their bikes to school every day. They line up near my house at their morning meeting point and cycle to school with adult volunteers. Cycling to school really benefits kids. A Danish study showed that four hours after arriving in the classroom, children who cycled or walked to school had concentration levels that were 8% higher than children who went to school by car. I live in Skarbæk, also known as Karbæk, by cycling and walking activists. These images were taken about one year apart. They show the Avenue von Vollenhoven, which bisects the Josephat Park, and before the pandemic was used as a through street and for car parking. During the lockdown, it was made car-free and it quickly became the place for children to learn and practice cycling. In November 2020, the Commune announced that car parking would be allowed here again. And the citizen protests were so strong that the decision was dialed back. Cycling is not only freedom, it also has enormous public health benefits. According to the European Cyclist Federation's conservative estimates, cycling prevents over 18,000 premature deaths a year in Europe. It contributes to healthier lives by preventing cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and um, osteoporosis, and certain kinds of cancer. This translates to an economic benefit of over 52 billion euros a year. For me, the health benefits are personal. Heart disease runs in my family. My father died of a heart attack at age 51 when I was a teenager. My sister had a heart attack at age 42. My mother and my sister both have type 2 diabetes. It's very possible that cycling for my daily mobility and recreation has kept me from the same fate. But cyclists are not only healthier, they're also happier. Regular physical activity, like cycling, is linked to 17% lower odds for developing depression. Some of the happiest moments of my life have been spent on a bicycle. Arriving in Vienna at the end of a 900-kilometer trip along the Danube, or spending a perfect day cycling around the vineyards of the Kaiserstuhl in Germany, or taking a gastronomic cycling tour in Italy, or just breezing up and down the F3 cycle highway between Brussels and Leuven, or just biking to the football stadium with my family to see a much-anticipated match. I cannot say the same for all the time in my life I've spent in cars. Although, to be fair, I almost got to experience the birth of my son in a car. Even the European Commission says that cycling cities are more livable cities. They are less congested, less polluted, less dirty, and less noisy. They're more vibrant, with cyclists spending more of their money in local businesses. They are more empowering for children. And they're also very nice places to raise families. 
Cycling cities have a much greater quality of life. With its mobility strategy, Good Move, Brussels has done quite a lot in recent years to make more space for cycling and walking. Here you see the before and after pictures of the Boulevard Anspach. Does anybody want to go back to the days of the choking car traffic there? So, cycling cities give much more space to people and much less space to big metal boxes that sit idle 95% of the time. This according to UCLA professor Donald Shoup. For all the improvements we've seen in Brussels in recent years, but especially the 30 kilometer per hour speed limit and the 40 kilometers of cycle lanes put in during the pandemic, many of which are being made permanent, it's no wonder that Brussels Minister for Mobility, Public Works, and Road Safety, Elke van den Brandt, won the 2021 award for leadership in cycling promotion from the Cycling Embassy of Denmark. Brussels has come a long way, and it's still improving, but it's also still very far from being a cycling city like Amsterdam or Copenhagen, where cycling is just completely normal. To normalize cycling, it has to be truly prioritized as an essential part of the mobility mix and given much more of its own space. But currently, it's considered by too many people as being too dangerous. Every day, there are on average 2.5 collisions and who knows how many near misses. As someone who cycles here every day, I have to say, it can be a terrifying experience. Despite lots of new cycle lanes, like these nice, wide, yellow lanes on the inner ring in Brussels, there are still too many main thoroughfares where cyclists have to share the road with cars and buses. Like on Chaussée de Louvain, where cyclists share the road with buses share the bus lane, and it, which is often blocked by delivery trucks or cars parking there for just a few minutes, or they have to use a narrow cycle lane which consists of painted dotted lines on the road that car drivers also like to double park in, which means that cyclists like me have to swerve to get around them. A survey done by the cyclist organizations Fietzersbund and Graak showed that a lack of safe cycling infrastructure is the number one reason why people don't cycle. And this was a reason given by 90% of the non-cyclist respondents to the survey. This also helps explain why 69% of the respondents who do cycle said they don't feel safe when doing so. Now, the Belgian weather was also cited as a deterrent to cycling in that survey, but examples of cities like Amsterdam and Copenhagen show that bad weather is a barrier that can be overcome if the cycling conditions are otherwise good enough. The bottom line is many more people would cycle much more often if it were safer. So what would make it safer in Brussels? Well a larger network of dedicated, protected cycle lanes that are connected, coherent, and direct. Not just painted dotted lines, but high quality, segregated cycle lanes. And safer intersections. And also, where cyclists have to share the road with cars or buses, better enforcement of the 30 kilometer per hour speed limits and enforcement of the rules against double parking and blocking the cycle lanes. Just imagine what it could be like in Brussels in five or 10 years if many more people understand that much more cycling is the key 
not only to climate neutrality, but to livability. And we give it the priority and investment it really deserves. Not only would we have great cycling, but we would also have, yeah, we would have less congestion and cleaner air and less noise pollution. Do you remember hearing the birds sing during the first lockdown? We could hear the birds again. Yeah? We could have wider sidewalks and more green spaces to take walks. We could have more space for outdoor dining and socializing. We could have more space for our children to play and roam about and have that sense of freedom and parents who are less worried about their safety. We could have citizens who are healthier and more active at all ages and have a, a better sense of well-being. We could have more vibrant and inclusive neighborhoods where people have many more opportunities to interact with their neighbors and, and, and meet them and, and also with their local shopkeepers. We would have a greater sense of community. And all of this would add up to happier Bruxelles who are much prouder to live here in Brussels and much more envied by those who don't. I think we all want this kind of a quality of life here. So what are we waiting for? Let's do this.